Hello students, welcome back to our class. In the previous module, we discussed about different types of triangles and their properties and their definitions of course. And in this module, we are going to discuss about congruence properties of triangles. So basically, what do you mean by that word named congruence? See, you need to understand something about congruence. Congruent figures means if you have two objects, those two objects are same in shape as well as in size, then they are said to be same. Those two figures are said to be same figures, not similar figures, same figures. Triangles, these are all geometrical figures. Of course, more precisely they are two dimensional figures, but we say if you identify two figures otherwise two objects which are same in shape as well as in size, then they are said to be congruent figures. We can see many number of congruent figures in our daily life, but coming to our mathematical term congruence about two dimensional plane figures two dimensional plane figures are nothing but polygons are two dimensional plane figures. See here in this polygons concept of polygons especially concept of triangles when two triangles are said to be congruent. See just by looking at one triangle we cannot decide what is the shape of that because what is the shape of a triangle it is a triangular in shape we cannot say more than that. But when you can say that two triangles are congruent, two triangles are congruent. There are some congruence properties are defined. We will have to follow those congruence properties in order to tell about two triangles which are congruent or not. Understand? Let us try to understand what are these congruence properties of triangles. It means when two triangles are said to be congruent, when two triangles are said to be congruent. See, there are some congruent properties. The very first one, if I have two triangles, this is one triangle. Let us name this triangle A, B, C and another triangle, for example, this is triangle P, Q, R. These two triangles are said to be congruent. This is the symbol for congruence. Okay? This is the symbol for congruent. See here, if I identify that length of AB is exactly same as length of PQ, length of BC is exactly same as length of QR and length of AC is exactly same as length of PR then these two triangles are said to be congruent by S, S, S congruency. What is that congruence? S, S, S congruence. What is this S, S, S congruence? If you have two triangles, if three sides of one triangle are respectively equal to the corresponding sides of the another triangle, then those two triangles are said to be congruent triangles by S, S, S congruence. If the length of side AB is equal to X units, then length of side PQ also equal to X units and length of side BC is equal to some Y units, length of QR is also equal to Y units and length of AC is equal to some Z units, then length of PR is also equal to Z units, then these two triangles are said to be congruent by SSS congruence and you can write it as triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR by SSS congruence. See when you are decided that those two triangles are congruent by one of these congruence properties, then you can compare the other parts of the triangle. What are the other parts? Triangle has two parts one is angles as well as the second one is sides. You know that sides of the triangles are equal, what about the angles must be equal. Those angles also corresponding angles. 
what are the corresponding angles here? See the angle between x and y is same as angle between x and y. Similarly, angle between y and z is same as angle between y and z. Obviously, this angle is equal to this angle, right? So, this is what called C P C T. What do you call that? C P C T. What do you mean by that C P C T? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles means you are already decided that the given two triangles are congruent by this congruence property, then other parts must be equal. Other parts are nothing but they must be corresponding parts. We cannot say that angle A is equal to angle Q because angle A is not included between x and y here. Angle A is included between x and z. So, what is the angle included between x and z? That is angle P. They are called corresponding angles. So, that angle A is equal to angle P, angle B is equal to angle Q, obviously angle C is equal to angle R. That is what is about S S S congruence. So, I repeat S S S congruence means three sides of one triangle are respectively congruent to or respectively equal to three angle sorry three sides of the other triangle then those two triangles are said to be congruent by S S S congruence. By C P C T the corresponding angles also equal. So, that is what the first congruency property that is S S S congruence, right. Coming to the second congruence property, the second congruence property is I have two triangles. So, this is one triangle, let it be triangle A B C and second triangle, let it be triangle P Q R. These two triangles have A B is equal to P Q means the length of AB is equal to length of PQ and the length of BC is equal to length of QR and the angle between these two sides that is angle B is exactly same as angle between these two sides that is angle Q. Then also you can say these two triangles are congruent by S A S congruence. What do you mean by this S A S congruence? Name itself indicates that says that two sides are equal and the angle included between them, not any other angle, the angle must be included between them. Then only those two triangles are congruent by S A S congruence. Hope you understand. See for example, in this triangle, for example, this is triangle X Y Z and this is one more triangle, let it be triangle D E F. In these two triangles, X Y is equal to D E and y z is equal to e f and this angle is equal to this angle. Can we say these two triangles are congruent? Absolutely no, because this angle must be included between these two sides. If two sides are equal, can we say that third side equal to third side? Absolutely we cannot, because this is not about sides property, this is about angles property. If two angles are equal, then automatically third angle equal to third angle. But in the case of sides, we cannot suggest, we cannot conclude that third side is also equal to third side because third side may be equal, may not be equal, right. For example, I have a side like this is 3 centimeters, okay, and this is some 5 centimeters, right. And this angle, this angle is equal to some 30 degrees, okay. Now, I have one more side, this is 3 centimeters. And here the angle is equal to some 70 degrees and this is 5 centimeters. See here angles are different between them, but the sides are equal. Here also sides are equal. Can you say that this side is equal to this side? You cannot say that. So, that is why when two sides are equal to two sides of the other triangle, then you cannot say that third side is also equal to third side. It depends on the angle included between the equal sides. So, then only you can say those two triangles are congruent by S A S congruence. You understand? Here you cannot say that triangle X Y Z is congruent to triangle D E 
f because here these two angles are equal but not angle y and angle e that is why be very careful two triangles are said to be congruent by SAS congruence only when two sides of one triangle are respectively equal to two sides of the corresponding sides of the other triangle and their included angles are equal then only those two triangles are said to be congruent triangles by SAS congruence their included angles please make a note of it their included angles are equal then only they are said to be congruent by SAS congruence hope you understand so we discussed about two congruent properties and third one the third one is going to be for example i have a triangle this is one triangle let us name this triangle as pqr and this is one more triangle the name of this triangle is for suppose xyz here angle q is equal to angle y angle r is equal to angle z and the included side qr is equal to included side yz see here in triangle pqr and xyz angle q is equal to angle y angle r is equal to angle z and their included sides are equal this is the included side and this is also included side then you can say that the triangle PQR is congruent to triangle XYZ by which property here? Two angles and one side. So, you should say that angle side angle congruence property. So, if two angles are of one triangle are equal to corresponding two angles of the other triangle and their included angles are equal then those two triangles are said to be congruent by asa congruence property hope you understand see here let us say this is one triangle some pqr this is one more triangle some xyz see here in these two triangles angle p is equal to angle x angle q is equal to angle y and PR is equal to YZ. Can we say these two triangles are congruent? We will have to think about this. Directly we cannot say because we are dealing with the angles. See, if these two angles are equal and these two angles are equal, automatically this angle is equal to this angle only now. Third angle is equal to third angle. But now you see, where is that equal side? Here this is the equal side between these two angles. Here this is the equal side between these two angles so that you cannot say that these two triangles are congruent by ASA congruence. So that be very careful that two triangles are said to be congruent by ASA congruence. Two angles of one triangle are respectively equal to the corresponding two angles of the other triangle and their included sides are equal then only we can say that those two triangles are congruent by a S A congruence. Hope you understand. And again by C P C D, since two triangles are congruent, see when you identify that two triangles are congruent, definitely you can apply by C P C D. What is that C P C D? All the other corresponding parts. What are the corresponding parts here? Corresponding parts are P Q is equal to X Y and P R is equal to X Z. As well as what about the third angle? Third angle is automatically equal to third angle that is what called CPCT, right? CPCT is applicable for any pair of congruent triangle. So, this is about ASA congruence and coming to one of the important congruent property of triangles that is the fourth one. I am going to take now two right angled triangles. This is one triangle PQR in which angle Q is equal to 90 degrees and another triangle I am taking here is this is one more right angle triangle that I am taking. So, in this right angle triangle let us name this right angle triangle as for suppose ABC. These two are two right angle triangles because one angle is equal to right angle. Here PR is the hypotenuse length is just exactly equal to the length of the hypotenuse of triangle ABC and one of the perpendicular sides must be equal to the another triangle. 
for example, P Q is equal to B C, right. Here in this triangle and here in this triangle, right angle is equal to right angle because right angle measurement is always 90 degrees. But what is given more? P R is the hypotenuse is equal to A C. So, hypotenuse is equal to hypotenuse and one more perpendicular side that P Q is equal to B C. So, here can we say that the triangle P Q R is congruent to triangle A B C? No, we cannot say because the order of the vertices is also very, very important. Okay? Here right angle is equal to right angle, hypotenuse is equal to hypotenuse, whatever the side, this is the side is equal to this. So, you will have to put them in order, in that particular order only. See for example, if you start with this P Q R triangle, P Q R, see here triangle P Q R is congruent to triangle, see this is angle P. Right. For example, if you go with this, this is the angle included with this equal side. So, where is the angle included with this equal side? That is C. So, you should start with the triangle C and Q is equal to 90. Where is 90 here? B. So, C, B, A. Now, this is correct. Understand? So, what is this congruence property? The congruence property is R H S congruence. What do you mean by R H S? right angle, hypotenuse and side. So, right angle, hypotenuse and side property that is what called RHS congruence property. So, by using this RHS congruence property, we can say that these two triangles are congruent. Once again, I repeat, these two triangles means what? You cannot say that PQR is congruent to ABC. We can say that PQR is congruent to CBA. When we can say that PQR congruent to ABC, PQ must be equal to AB, then only we can say that PQ are congruent to ABC. Hope you understand. Be very careful with the order of the vertices, even when you are considering their congruence properties also. Right? So, these four are four congruence properties of triangle we discussed and by using one of these congruence properties, we can prove the given two triangles are congruent. and by any chance you proved that those two triangles are congruent, then be ready to apply CPCT because when two triangles are congruent, congruent means what? Everything is equal, everything is same. So, that is why you can apply the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So, have a brief look on this congruence properties of triangles. So, what are congruence properties of triangles? Congruence properties. of triangle. So, first congruence property of triangle is S A S congruence, S A S congruence and second congruence property is A S A congruence property and third congruence property is, what is the third congruence property? S A S congruence and fourth one is R H S congruence property. So, these four are four congruence properties. With the help of these four congruence properties, we can easily check whether the given two triangles are congruent or not. And by any chance, if two triangles are congruent by one of these congruence properties, then you can apply CPCD that is what called corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Hope you enjoyed this class. Thank you.